So I'm working on a larger project in Blender and I needed this T pipe connection in order to finish the model I was working on. So I thought today I'd show you a quick way to create that and then I'll show the larger project in another video. So here I'm in Blender 4.3.0. I don't have any special add-ons. So I'm gonna click in the viewport. You can see I have this cube. I wanna hit S and Z to scale that down. Now I'm going to click tab to go into edit mode and I'm gonna click edge mode up here on the left and I wanna add some loops to this. I'm gonna to go to loop cut. I'm gonna add one in the middle because I'm gonna need that vertices in the middle to do the circle. So I'm gonna add a loop vertically and then I'm gonna add a loop horizontally. Now this uh, 3D cursor is in the way so I'm gonna go up here to overlays and turn that off so I can better see what I'm doing. Now in the future, I'm gonna to need to add some edges on each edge in order to help with the subsurface modifier. So I'm gonna left click and drag my loop cut to add those. It's easier to just go ahead and add them now rather than later. So what I'm doing is clicking and then holding down my left mouse button that allow me to drag this around. Then when I find the spot I want, I just release it. So I'm gonna go up here to points mode and then do this drop down and select circle. So I'm gonna click that middle point and I'm going to go to my bevel tool. You see how this yellow thing pop up. I wanna left click and drag on that just barely, but you see nothing happens, but I do get a menu down here at the bottom left. So I'm gonna expand that. Where it says edges, I wanna click vertices and now you can see we've got a shape. So see where it says segments is one, I wanna change that to four and then actually adds four to each side. So it ends up being a 16 sided cylinder. So the shape isn't exactly what we want, but if I left click and drag on shape, I can create a circle out of that. I'm just gonna eyeball that. Then when I increase the width to about that big, I wanna give it a little space on the sides, but it's gonna take up most of it. So I'll click on select circle tool again, left click in the viewport to finalize that. So now I need to connect these dots. But you see I don't have any way to connect them at the moment. So I'm gonna select my loop cut tool again. I'm gonna click in here and drag so I'm kind of even with that point here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing here, here. So now you see I've got points to connect all of this to. So I'm gonna click on my knife tool at the left. I'm gonna click this point and drag up to this point and then hit enter to finalize it. You see now I've got that edge. Do the same thing here. Hit enter. So I'm just gonna go around and connect all of these. If you ever have an issue where the knife tool adds a point where you don't want it to, but it's still active, just hit control Z to undo it. It'll keep the knife tool active, but it'll stop it from making that point. So just come to keep in mind if you run into that issue. I do want to spread these out just a little bit. So I'm going to go to X-ray mode. I'll select these and then I'll hit shift and select those. And the same thing down here the entire time holding shift. Now I'll hit S to scale and I'll hit X to constrain to the X axis. I'm going to spread those out just a little. I'm going to do the same thing on the sides. Holding shift. S and Y. Now if I come out of x-ray mode, you can see what that looks like. So I'm gonna get my circle select tool. I'm gonna select all these inner points just by holding my left mouse button and dragging over them. Then I'll hit delete vertices. And now you see I've got my circle. I'll go to edge mode, click that, holding alt shift. And you can see I've selected the whole thing. Now I'll hit E to extrude it. You can see it's moving around. I'll hit Z to constrain the Z axis and bring that up to about right there. Then I hit E again and Z and add just another one. That way when I subdivide this, uh, it'll hold that edge. And that's if you're wanting a realistic type model. I'll be using this in Blender Grease Pencil, so I don't really need that. Uh, I'm really worried about the edge, but if you're looking for more realistic style, uh, that's what I'm modeling for at the moment. So I'm gonna loop cut, drag a loop down here, and another one here. Now see it's uneven, but if I click on my menu and hit even, it'll spread that out. I'm gonna scale that in. So now I've got a circle there. I do wanna click 
on this and holding Alt Shift, I'm going to hit S to scale it just a little bit to give it a little bit of a form. And then I'm going to hit G, Z to grab it and bring that up. Right click, Shade Smooth. And I'm going to add a subsurface modifier to it. I'm going to go to the Modifiers panel, hit Add Modifier, Generate, Subdivision Surface. I'm going to move that up to 2. And see what that looks like. Now you currently don't have any um, thickness on the inside. Now if I hold Alt Shift in Edge Mode and click this edge, you can see it highlights it. I'm going to hit F to create a face. Now I'm going to go to Face Mode and left click. Now I've got that face. And I'm going to go to Inset Faces. And I'm going to bring that in just a bit. Or now you can see I have an edge there. Now we hit delete to delete that face. Okay, we'll go to edge mode, hit alt shift again to select that edge. And we'll hit E to extrude. And we'll hit Z to constrain to the Z axis and bring that down. So I'll hit E again and Z just to create a little loop there. So now if I go back to my subdivision and turn it on, and we'll come out of edit mode, see what that looks like. So now I have some thickness there, but not enough. So I'm going to turn off my sub DV modifier when I go back to edit mode. Now I don't have a loop on the inside, so let me go to loop, cut, click there, drag that up. And see, I have one at the bottom. I'm going to go back to object mode and turn that back on. And you can see I have that. Now, if it's not thick enough, I'm going to turn this off, go back to edit mode. I'm going to hit alt shift hold those down click that one click that circle click that edge so now to increase the thickness i'll hit scale and i'll hit shift z so it'll scale in everything but the z axis and we'll bring that in now if i turn this back on and go to object mode you can see now i have the thickness i want now if you want to increase or decrease the size of that bevel you can go to edit mode I can click on this holding Alt Shift. And I'll click on the other one on the inside. Then I'll hit G to grab it, Z to extrude the Z axis and bring it down. And then I turn that back on, go to object mode, and you see it's a little softer. I want to do that. If you want to increase the base size, I want to turn this off. I want to go back to edit mode. I'm going to circle select. Face mode, select these. Go to the other side, hold shift, select those. Seven to go to top view. I'm going to hit S and constrain to the X axis. Bring those out. Now that I've got that, if I turn on the sub D modifier, you can see how that looks. So we need that edge back. So I'm going to turn that off, go back to edit mode, select my loop cut, add one here, add one here. Go back to object mode, turn that back on. If I render this, see what that looks like. So if you found this video helpful, again, this is part of a larger project that I hope I'll be showing soon on the channel, but I thought this would be a quick project so you can see how to create a circle and this uh, T-pipe fitting in case you need it for any of your mechanical objects in the future. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.